Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with the eBook Reader blog. So for this video, uh, let's do a comparison review of the seven inch Kindle Oasis uh, on the left and the eight inch Kobo Forma on the right. So these are both uh, the company's higher end models. They both have a similar design with the uh, page buttons on one side of the screen. Uh, they're both waterproof. Proof. They both have the flush front screens. Uh, they both weigh about the same. There's only a couple of grams difference between the two, even though the Kobo is bigger, it uses a flexible uh, plastic screen. So. The Kindle Oasis it has the metal back, and it's also available in a light gold color. Uh, and it has that contour, whereas the uh, Kobo Forma has more of a tapered design, and it has the, you know, the all flat back. So you've got the different kind of style there. Uh, so they both have the sensor that automatically rotates the screen, so you can use them either left or right handed. The Kindle design has that wedge that you kind of curl your fingers on, and then the uh, it's very thin on the other side of the, the device there. Um, and then the Kobo, so it's got this sort of a taper design where it just sort of gradually decreases to a thinner point down there and the, the button area kind of curves up. Uh, and the one thing about the uh, Kobo here is it automatically rotates to landscape mode as well. So the Kindle will only automatically rotate to portrait mode, uh, but with the Kobo you can also rotate it to landscape mode like this. Uh, and then it's got the page buttons right there, of course, and then you've got the power button right down here as well as the USB port. And then it's got this sort of uh, rubbery coating on the uh, back and side here. So uh, one of the biggest differences between these two devices is uh, how the front light works on the two of them. So the Kobo, they add the option to change the front light color. So we're all the way on the natural light right here. You can sort of add a little bit of warm tone to it with each increment here. And then it kind of goes to a sort of a dark yellowish color. Uh, so the Kindles, they don't have any kind of feature like that. But the Kindles front light is kind of naturally a bit warmer than the Kobo's is at the lowest setting. But the Kobo's goes all the way to the far end here. Um, and the, the one thing that the Kindle has is it has the inverted text mode, so you can actually use the white text with a black background. So the Kobos don't have any official support for that, though there is a way to add it. So here's a quick look at the front lights maxed out on both of these. Uh, so it's just a little bit more wider on the uh, Kindle Oasis there, like the text stands out a little bit more. One thing I noticed with the Kobo is it seems a little brighter on the left side than it does on the right side. As you can see, there's sort of a little dark strip that goes down the side with the buttons. Um, it is a little bit more distracting, uh, but one of the cool things with Kobo is you can adjust the brightness by uh, sliding up and down the screen on the left side there. Um, you can also set it so that the natural light will automatically get a little more yellow as the day goes on. All right, so let's move on to some of the other features. Uh, page turns, uh, Kindle gets a little bit of an edge here. It does turn pages a little bit faster, except the Kobo has a cool thing. If you hold down the page button, you can fast scan and it'll scan through the pages. Uh, the Kindle doesn't have any kind of scan feature like that, but you can open up the multi-page view, which the Kobo doesn't have. Uh, and then you can actually scan pages through here. Uh, if you hold down, like on the arrow, it'll scroll through the book. Um, or you can just view one page at once and do the same thing. Kobo's ebook readers used to have a big advantage when it came to the, like the font choices and the layout settings, but Amazon's updated the Kindle software a lot over the past year. We've got some cool features in here now. You got the ability to add custom fonts. You got this boldness dial, so you can control exactly how bold you want your text to appear. Uh, so and they, they just added a new theme option where you can save the different settings and switch between different themes. So Kobo's, you can add fonts to Kobo's as well, and it has the option to uh, customize the weight. However, it only works on Kobo's fonts unless you like use a patch to use it on sideloaded fonts. Kobo still has an advantage when it comes to line spacing and margin settings. So you still have like a whole bunch of line spacing margin options, and the Kindle just kind of has some pointless margin settings that make them super huge, or like normal is basically it. Um, and then like the, uh, I mean, Kobo, you can kind of fine tune it a little bit more to your taste. Um, one thing the Kobo also offers is more font size. They have like 50 font sizes or something like that. Uh, with the Kindle, you have 14. So you can kind of, uh, fine tune your reading, like preferences just a little bit more with Kobo's. Although Kindles have come a long way in the last few years, they've added all the new font choices and, uh, that definitely helps a lot. So kind of helps even the playing field a bit between the two. Um, and then, like I said, the Kindle has these themes, so it has some preloaded ones here, and you can also hide those if you don't want those, and you can create your own themes, so you can tw quickly switch between different font and layout settings between them, so, um, both have good range of font sizes, though, as far as, like, the high end, the low end, uh, like I said, the Kobo has more font sizes, um, it's got a greater range of them, so one quick, uh, shortcut with the Kindle, though, you can just kind of zoom through the fonts, it's a little bit easier than having to use the zone, the dial on the Kobo, uh, Kobo has this cool little uh, estimated reading timer right here where it shows you how much time you got left in the chapter and in the book. The Kindle, you have to tap this little thing at the bottom. It'll kind of cycle through uh, telling you how much time you got left in the book. Kobo gives you a little bit more of a, a visual layout with that. And 
You've also got the options to switch your page turn buttons on both of these devices in the settings menu. This is the new thing they added with the Kobo former is you can actually disable the title and the uh, footer so you can go full screen mode. You can also control like when you have the footer enabled uh, what it displays this as here with your reading timer. Um, so yeah, that's a cool new thing they added with the Kobo is being able to go full screen like that. You used to have to patch it. Sometimes I like to keep it the footer on just so you can see how many pages left in the chapter. So one thing Kindles have always had an advantage with is like highlighting. Uh, just a smoother experience on the Kindles works a little bit better. Although Kobo's have come a long way in recent updates. It's definitely smoother than it used to be. Um, it actually works pretty well until you have to adjust it. Or as you can see right here, it didn't go quite to the end of the word. For some reason, I've been having that issue a lot. Um, sometimes it goes, if you just do it quick and easy, it'll, it'll work. If you're trying to like adjust it, that's where things get kind of a little bit weird sometimes. Um, it never works that first time. Then the second time, it'll start to work okay. But as you can see, it doesn't always go to the end of the word like it should. Uh, it leaves the G off right there. So still not quite as accurate on the Kobo as it is on the Kindle. So uh, both have the option to add, you know, bookmarks. If you tap the upper corner here, Co Kindle's does a little bit different. It's like a two-step process, but then you can like quickly jump back and forth between your other bookmarks just by tapping the bookmark icon. Uh, Kindles also have a couple extra features like you can disable the touch screen if you just want to use the buttons uh, It's got a vocabulary builder. It's got a word wise feature uh, So the Kobo doesn't have anything like that uh, Kindles also have x-ray which this book does not have which like gives you different information about characters and places in the book uh, So Kindles they still have some advantages with the uh, added features Kobo It does have this option to lock portrait or landscape mode with the auto rotation Like I said the Kindles doesn't automatically rotate to landscape you have to Go into the settings if you want to rotate to landscape mode uh, with kindle adds those themes they both have table of contents which works pretty well um, so they both have like active hyperlinks a lot of the features are the same both obviously have dictionary support when you look up words in the dictionary um, so a lot of overlapping features i'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail with that here check out the individual reviews for each of these all right so let's talk about the library view kind of really quick uh, the Kindle has this uh, different kind of home screen right here where it kind of gives you recommendations. You can actually turn this home screen off, which I usually have it turned off, but I just tried it out with this new update. Uh, usually it looks like this. You can have it set to go like this for your home screen where it just goes to your library view. Um, so Kindles, you also have the option to go to list view. So uh, list view will not give you any, um, you know, the covers at all, where the Kobo as list view does give you the covers. I like Kobo's list view better, but it also has the option to switch over to cover view as well. Um, so you can use the page buttons to scroll through your library with both of these devices. Kobo is implemented a little better because you can also use the page buttons like when you're visiting Kobo store where like the Kindle store, the page buttons don't work. Uh, you got some different sorting options here. So the Kindle, it sorts different. You can have things sorted by different documents. You got some different filters for the Kobo as well. A little bit more advanced stuff on the Kobo there. So uh, one advantage for the uh, Kobo is it has the OverDrive integration, so you can download library books directly from the Kobo store. Uh, the Kindle can download library books as well. You just have to have them wireless delivered using a different device uh, where everything's on board with the Kobo. So uh, in the settings menu here, we've got some different options, like the Kobo has different tap zones. Uh, Kindle has the night light, which will gradually decrease the light, light at night. And then it's got some of those vocabulary builder feature, the... Uh, the WordWise feature here that the Kobo doesn't have. The Kobo has like this page refresh setting. You can customize how often the page will refresh. Kindle will do it either every chapter, or if you have it turned on right here, it'll do it every page turn. Um, so here's just a quick look at a manga on both of these, the same one. Um, obviously the larger screen is gonna be a benefit on the uh, Kobo. Uh, the Kindle, it does turn pages a little bit faster. Um, and it's also a little faster when you're like zooming in or anything like that. But um, it has this fast page turn feature, so if you hold down and scroll like this, you can scan through comics this way. Um, the Kobo has the same sort of deal. It's a little bit easier because you can just hold down the page button. Um, if you hold down the page buttons with the Kindle, it doesn't do the fast page scan thing. Um, the Kobo, you can also hold down in the corner of the page to do the fast page scan thing. Not quite as fast as the Kindle, but um, it's useful nonetheless. Um, so obviously, you can both you can use landscape mode on both of these if you wanted to view the full two pages at once. Obviously, larger screen again is going to be a benefit for the Kobo, but speed's a little bit of a benefit for the Kindle. Here's just one minor detail. I like how Kobo's devices show the book you're reading on the sleep screen. Kindles show these nonsensical screensavers or advertisements if you have an ad model. So this has just been a quick comparison of the Kindle Oasis and the Kobo Forma. Check out the ebook reader blog for the full written review. I'll get in a little more detail, a little bit more uh, information about both of these also in their full reviews. So thank you guys for watching. Bye.